Hi, NA Physics, it's Mr. Neff. Today, let's talk about batteries in series and parallel. And before we do, what part of a candy bar likes music the most? I'll tell you about that at the end of the video. What a fantastic invention and discovery the battery is. It's a thing that in a convenient package, it will continuously supply a potential difference. That is, continuously give a voltage. That is, continuously energize charge for you again and again and again. Um, and lasts in, in modern batteries, lasts for a pretty long time at a, at a high level until it, it dies out quickly at the end. Batteries are going to produce direct current, and they're going to do that by using some internal chemistry that your chemistry teacher will, has or will teach you about uh, when the time is right. When we say a battery, we're referring to a galvanic or a voltaic cell, that is, uh, something that is going to, to use an oxidation, react, or, uh, oxidation reduction reaction to produce a, to produce a voltage. There's a thing called an electrolytic cell, but that makes the current flow the other direction. When we draw a battery, it's easy enough to draw a cylinder with a positive side and a negative side. But you're going to start to see that drawn schematically, that is drawn simple the way that an engineer would do it. And when you draw that, it's the long, there's going to be a long line and a short line like this. The long line is the positive side. It makes sense because there's more line, just like there's more line on a positive, and the short side is a short line. It's uh, just like there's less uh, line on a negative. Now, if you're going to put two batteries together like this, then you put a series of long line, short line together. So as many batteries as you had, you would, or technically the way to refer to that is as a cell, the more cells you have, the more long line, short line combinations you're going to have. But it's very important to know that the long line is the positive and the short line is the negative. Now, we can connect batteries just as a single into a, into a series, but we can also connect batteries uh, in series or parallel. Now, in series, the word series is going to be something that comes up again and again. And this is our first go around with series. Series means there's one conducting path through the elements that are connected in series. Take, for instance, these two batteries. I have them connected positive to negative. That's always the telltale sign of series. And so if I had some charge and that charge were moving through here, well, it would move through the one battery and then it would have to move through the other battery to continue to make progress. It's not that it goes through one battery and there's really no choice. If you go through one battery and the circuit stays connected for long enough, you will go through the other battery too. That's series, no choice, one conducting path. Now I want to compare that to connecting them in parallel. See what I've done down here? I connected the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative, as opposed to what I had up above with the positive connected to the negative. Now if I had some charge moving here, maybe this is charge at low energy, the battery is a, is a thing that will energize the charge. Well, look at this. If you go from here, to there, you're elevated by six volts, six joules per coulomb, and so you come out six volts. But you don't have to necessarily go through that battery. You could continue down this path, and there's an alternate way to get up here. But you see that I've only traveled across the, the battery, the positive to the negative or negative to the positive, which is the way things get energized once. And so you can see how it's marked six volts down here, but only 12 volts up there. How's that work in, in real life? Well, over here on the simulator, I have I've connected two batteries in series and in parallel. See what I have? In series, that's the top one, I have the negative connected to the positive. And then from that series, I have it going through a ball. Now, the one in parallel, on the other hand, I have the positive connected to the positive, the negative connected to the negative, and then I have that going through a ball. And so now I can get them connected. If I connect these two like this, I get a really lot of light coming out of there. Versus if I connect these two like this, I don't get nearly as much light. Notice something, please. I don't have nearly as much uh, flow. Look at, look at how the charges are racing through the one in series. It's functioning as a super battery. The one in parallel, on the other hand, they are 
that it is not functioning as a super battery. But one thing that we won't take the time in this video to see is this would last a lot longer. The, these batteries would, uh, would last just as long as one battery would times two. So really we would get twice as much on that. So all that to say that when the batteries are connected in series, you get super battery, which is equal to the sum total of the two. You can see 12 is six plus six versus in parallel, you just get it equal to the, the uh, individual voltages. If there are different voltages, it would be equal to the one highest one, but it, you don't get a, uh, you don't get a super battery, but you get a super long lasting battery, which is good too. Last thing in this video, I have a, a quick little example where they have some batteries connected in different ways and they ask for the ball brightness. So now you could see that depending on how I connected those, I could get a brighter bulb or I could get a dimmer bulb. Well, how about here? When we connect these like so and we light and all the bulbs are the same and all the batteries are the same as each other, uh, what's going to be the brightest and what's going to be the dimmest? Now, the truth is the brightness of a bulb is, re is related to the power. And that's an idea we're used to. Power is energy per unit of time. So if something's brighter, that means more energy is coming out per second. And if something's not as bright, less. So all that to say this, whichever the power is the voltage squared divided by the resistance. We'll cover that in the future. But you can see that the one that has the most voltage will also have the most power. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to stop the video. And I'd like you to take a stab at this, putting these in order from brightest to least bright, and then start it again and see how you did. Okay, we're back. You can see that A is kind of uh, the thing that we're going to compare to. I'm going to say that there's a voltage here of V, and so the power is just V squared over R. On B, though, we have a V and another V, and so the two of them together are functioning as twice the voltage. So I'm going to have two V quantity squared over R, which is actually going to be four times as bright as A. If, so if A has a power of P, then B is going to have a power of 4P. Arrangement C is, has three batteries, and so it has a voltage of 3V. And so I'm going to take 3V quantity squared divided by the resistance of the bulb, which are all the same. And so that's going to give me 9P, really bright. D and E, on the other hand, well, they are long lasting. That's connected in parallel. As you can see, positive is connected to positive, negative is connected to negative. This functions as V, not 2V, not half V, just V. And so it's really, in terms of brightness, no different than what I had in A. In E, same kind of thing. I have a V and a V and a V, sure. But all of those together are just giving me V because they're in parallel. And so that gives me the same brightness as I had in D and the same brightness I had in A. So that's P. So all that to say, the brightest bulb is arrangement C, then arrangement B, and then we have a three-way tie to finish A and D and E. There it is. I hope you got that right on your end too. Hey, so let's just end with this. What part of the candy bar likes music the most? Of course, the rapper.